Okay, we're still in Kununurra. Been here hanging out for a little while. We're still waiting on that important delivery. So it's an early morning today and we're gonna go for a hike. We're gonna check out a place called Elephant Rock and it is a magic morning. So beautiful sunrise that way and a cool rock over there somewhere. So let's go. pretty easy rock scramble up to the top of this and it's so worth it. The views and the reflections on Lake Kununurra are so pretty. Very peaceful this morning. That was so cool. Now we're going to walk all the way back down and find a spot for Brecky. That was a beautiful way to start the day. Our problem now is that we were going to head out for breakfast, but it's quarter past seven, so I don't think anything's going to be open. So we're just going to have to dilly dally around for a little bit until we can get some brekkie in town. And fingers crossed, a delivery arrives today. We're at the Kununurra show. We just did some bungee jumping and backflips and stuff, but now we're going to go hit the Gravitron. It's going to be so Gravitron y. <laughs> Energy. What happened to you? I'm tired now. Yeah. <laughs> what did you do? Backflips. <laughs> Bungees and we went on the Gravitron and it was super fun. Now it's time to go home. Finally, the moment we've been waiting like 20 days for, the replacement drone is here. <laughs> and we can start to fly again. Happy guy. So it's basically a daily ritual for us um, to go collect firewood. So here we are, out with rocks, going for a little drive out here. There's like a, um, it's like an old creek bed out here which is all dried up and obviously in the wet season this is all full of water out here. And now there's just like logs and timber absolutely everywhere. There's even logs up in the tops of trees and stuff. So there's like really no reason to need to chop down a tree or anything around here. There's just 
so much wood on the ground and it's perfect. So we just cruise around every Arvo. We come down here, we grab some firewood and um, it's only a few minutes from camp. It's daily ritual. What you got? Got all of the firewood for tonight. Looking good. Let's go get a couple more, I reckon. Yes. Let's go. Call oh, this one the shark fin. The shark fin. Look at him. I reckon the kids are so enthusiastic about this wood collecting because it gives them excuse to go and drive the car. That's what they really want. You driving us home? All right. Let's go. Fire it up. I'm gonna go get this wood, pick me up. Let's see how this all pans out. Need a lift, mate. Back to camp. Back to camp. All right, I'll come for a ride. Got room? Yeah, got room. Let's do it. Lift back to camp. Lift back to camp. Got the wood? Got the wood in the back and on the roof. Campfire tonight? Always with the flint. Let's do it. Wait till you see my shark fin, Mum. Shark fin? Yeah, my shark fin. Show me then. We. You go. Now we wait for five o'clock, which is when we do our fires. We're back at camp and I promised you scones and that's what you're gonna get. Now I'm gonna teach you how to make them. These scones are so easy to make. There's only four ingredients. Self-raising flour, dairy-free butter, salt, and dad's homemade almond milk. This batch will be enough so everyone gets three or four scones each. Plus old mate over the back is looking pretty hungry too. He might want one. First into the thermomix, the flour. About 400 grams or two cups. We need the salt about this much. Next you put in the butter, 80 grams or 8 tablespoons. Give it a quick whiz on speed 10. It's supposed to kind of look like breadcrumbs. I'm so helpful with eating them. Next about a cup of milk but you want to put it in slowly so the scones don't get too sticky. Another quick whiz, 10 seconds and speed four. It's supposed to look like a little bowl of dough. Next step is to knead it for a minute. The Thermomix does it all for me. It's looking good. Now we have to roll it out and make it into little scones. Now I'm going to preheat my oven, but I don't have an oven, so I'm just going to use a pan with a lid. Just put it on medium heat with the lid on. Now the fun part, cutting the scones. got the cookie cutter, dip it in flour so it doesn't get sticky, and then you cut. And 
my gosh, look at these, they're so good. Let's get them in the pan. Lid on and timer on for about 10 minutes. They've been in for five minutes and they're ready for a flip. Lid back on and five more minutes. They're done, we're gonna take him out and serve him. Here they are, campmates gone. So easy. Got no issues, it's kinda nice. Like running water into a paradise. Got no drama, feels like we arrived. Mm. Yummy. Picture perfect, it don't exist. But when I'm with you, like don't have to question gun. it. True so emotion. Thank you, Coco. Nicely. Pulled up today, we've got the inside scoop at a place called Butterfly Cave just out of Kununurra. Um, apparently it's an amazing little cave full of butterflies, we don't even know if we're in the right place. We've just found this little track and it kind of looks like there's a cave over that way. So we're going to scramble through this little bush track. See what we can find. Let's go see if we can find some butterflies. Definitely think we're on the right track. We've sort of found a cave opening over here. There's already tons of butterflies flying around. It's really peaceful and beautiful. There's nobody around, so this could be like one of those little hidden gems. Definitely on the right track. There are millions of butterflies around here. Check it out. This is so cool. There's so many butterflies. There are so many butterflies. This is like a little cave and then just just hundreds of butterflies everywhere. So cool. is like a tropical oasis with like butterflies and everything. Such a cool adventure and so happy we came today. How was that for a nice little surprise in Kununurra? Yeah, such a surprise. So beautiful and peaceful out here. So many butterflies. Just a really nice peaceful little place. There's a little bit of running water even though like this is a dry season and we didn't think there'd be much water. There's a little bit of water. It's like beautiful and cool in the shade in the cave and like no one around again. You could just yep. sit here and have a snack, have lunch and just so peaceful, I epic place. Stop. I can't stop watching them. They're just, <laughs> They're just so every cool. time we try and leave, like something happens and we end up taking more photos. <laughs> but I'm like so hungry. Yep. And we need to go to town and do some shopping. We've got no food left. I want a snack real bad. <laughs> so um, let's get moving. Okay, in a minute. You're out filming because I'm scared of crocodiles. And the girls want to do this water crossing, so... So funny and interesting where the adventures take you. We've got this fun little water crossing on the Ord River and I get to walk it with a camera while the girls get to drive it and have all the fun. It's cool though, we're just gonna see what's on the other side. We've spotted a few crocodiles so far. We don't know if they're freshwater or saltwater so we're keeping our distance, but a bit going on around here.
All right, so if you saw the last video, we had the little hack where we diverted our water from our rear tank and we fed it straight into the river here. So we've been using fresh water all the way through the van, which has been amazing. And it's got this other little like hack part two, which because we're packing up camp today and we're leaving early in the morning, gotta fill our tanks to go. So have a look at this one. All we do is take our outdoor shower here and our rear tanks about half empty at the moment. So we just take the head off our outdoor shower. And because we're plumbed into the river, we can put our outdoor shower straight into our rear tank and turn the tap on and wait a while. And now we're pumping river water via our filter straight into our rear tank. So a quarter of a tank we've worked out will probably take about 10, 15 minutes to fill up so that when we hit the road tomorrow to hit the Northern Territory, we're gonna be full. So we'll see you in the NT. Standard afternoon around camp, got the fire going, crocs on the bank over there, sunset is so nice, and we're just going to settle in for the evening. I'm just doing some art by the fire. Some art by the fire, huh? Mm -hmm. Nice spot you got. Yeah. yeah, perfect little office. Show us your design. That's the start of one. Put that out the way. Oh, can't wait to see that when it's finished. Yeah. Ah. Ah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a little bit sad. Yeah, we've got yeah. the pack up blues. Yeah, this we've been accidentally staying here for 19 days now and And like something like 23 days in Tananara. Tananara. And it has been like the biggest surprise, really. Didn't know what to expect coming here. We did not expect to find a place that just felt like bloody home. So good. Um, this place is called Buttons Crossing, and it is, from what we've heard, people that have traveled Australia one, two, three times are putting this in their top two or three spots of free camps around Australia, and now we can see why. It's right on the Ord River, just out of town in Kununurra. You get to go over the Ivanhoe Crossing, which is fun, because if you're doing trips into the supermarket every now and then, it makes it worthwhile. Um, we have met some lifelong friends here. Yeah. Uh, just the memories that we've created here in the last three weeks have just been incredible. Um, but we need to move on. Yeah, we, we're we going across the border. This is like massive for... We're getting out of the jail stay. Yep. And we're, we're heading the Northern Territory. Um, so excited about that. Yep. Sad to be leaving this place. Yeah, really yeah. sad to be leaving. Um, the girls met some great friends here last week and they've now moved on. They're heading west, we're heading east. Um, so we're all going the wrong way, but hopefully just around the corner there's gonna be some more amazing people to bump into. We've had neighbors here for like a week at a time and yep. it always sucks to say goodbye. Yep, yeah. So anyway, buttons crossing, put it on your list. Put it on your list, rock up, magic spot, yep. hopefully these videos we've been making will show how nice it is and how enjoyable it's, it, enjoyable it's been for the whole family. Yeah, and uh, um, yeah, we're off to the NT. See you NT. Yeah. So in the, see, see you in the NT. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Isn't that the sticker? I want to get a sticker. I'm so not getting a That's sticker. Funny. See you in the NT. We're hitting yeah. the NT tomorrow morning. Can't wait. I can't wait. Crossing so, the border. Oh yeah. Thanks for joining us in this vid guys. Hit that subscribe button. It means heaps. And yeah, we'll see you next time. See you. Good morning. Chilly morning this morning. <laughs> it, it's chilly. Yeah. It's early though. Like it's 5.30 in the morning. So and it should be chilly. It's the day we leave. We're packing up, leaving this awesome free camp, ready to roll, um, eventful evening. The universe sent us a sign that it's time to leave because last night the salty from up the creek, a bloody big salty, was out the front of our camp last night and we watched him. He's the creepiest thing ever. Freaking creepy. <laughs> Coco got up for a wee last night um, and flew back inside the caravan like, there's a crocodile right there, there's a crocodile right there. And she said she saw some red eyes like right here, like two meters off this little beach behind us, which is where we've been like quickly jumping in for a dip, um, you know, grabbing water, 
like multiple times a day and even yep. the girls got their little swimming pool at the back here so we came out with a torch and i quickly i saw the back end of him go underwater it was dark um so we got up every you know 20 minutes or so after that to to look and then we did see him again just further behind us we've got some neighbors camping and he was right in front of their camp um just it, it's almost like he was stalking the campsites it was just yeah creepy and last night no one had a fire like we no one around us had that's a the fire only thing last different. night that's the only thing different that we've done we so. did notice um about three or four days ago all the freshwater crops that we've been watching every day out just on the other side or they on the island of, yeah, they, they disappeared dis they disappeared they stopped they were there for the first week or two here they were every single day without fail same spot same crocs and then they all disappeared and we're like well that might be a bad sign it might mean maybe a, a bigger crocs moved in or something yeah. And he did. And then we got up again last night, super late. Like and midnight just to check because we were excited. And there he was, like right out the front, oh, underwater. We just here behind these bushes on the corner, which is like super close. We just He was just sitting there watching us. And he, because we were, this river here is moving so fast. We thought, I don't think a crocodile could swim against this current. And he swam with ease. No worries at all. Upstream. Straight upstream along the edge of our rock wall of our swimming pool here. He just planted himself behind this little island and yep it was super creepy so time to go it's time Wait. to go this morning we've been keeping a keen eye on our dog sandy yeah. this morning she's in the van at all the car she's she's not going pretty anywhere. much not going to go near the water because she likes to go for the wander and sniff things out but not today so yeah um it's been absolutely incredible here though yeah. yep. favorite spot on the trip for me by a mile 100 percent. so want to come back here this is called buttons crossing insane spot yeah looking forward to hitting the northern territory this morning yeah. so we're about to pull out of here and um hit the road hit the road so thanks for joining we'll see you all in the northern territory in the nt Bye. It's a firecracker. Where'd you get it from, you dodgy mates? <laughs> yes. Who's <laughs> your dodgy friend? That guy. <laughs> <laughs> Don't run towards me, you crazy head. Hold on. Oh. <laughs> what do you got there? Firecrackers. Where'd you get that from? My dodgy mates. <laughs> Like the wing's gonna break. Oh, oh that was a dud. Oh. 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 Yeah, good one. Did you drop it on your face? Oh, I've got thongs on. <laughs> this one's gonna get us for sure. Yes. Is that two in a row that you've had that have done that? Yep. You got the sink, show me your weapon. What do you got? I'm going that way. Show me that thing. Ah. What is that? It's a firecracker. Firecracker? I'm going to throw it that way. Take me down! These ones are catching the fire. Oh, yes. Okay. What are we up to tonight? We are setting off some fireworks. Who's got them? These dodgy people. <laughs> These dodgy people. They're your mates now. Oh, Okay, this one's smaller. Okay, ready? Oh, it's sideways. Damn, son. <laughs> 